hopefully some of the aims that I will go through with you today is pretty much just to demonstrate uh, uh, an understanding of how the theory element of solar taxonomy can actually link to your theory lessons. Um, show you ways that you can use uh, solar taxonomy to get from the shadow to deep learning in your lessons to, to, to really push on those students and support those that need a bit more help. Um, one thing I've found over the last couple of years of using solar taxonomy is about the structure and the way that's helped me plan my lessons a little bit better. Um, the way it's actually helped students understand how to uh, grasp the concepts that I'm trying to share with them, the information, the definitions, um, link them to supporting examples, and that's hopefully I can show you how you can use uh, it to plan in your lessons as well. Um, I'll then try and dur during or throughout the session go through all the key components because there's a, a little bit of jargon that goes with it uh, and some terminology with solar taxonomy which it kind of catches a few people out. Um, it makes a few people hesitant about using solar taxonomy. Um, but actually, when you get an understanding of what each of the words mean and the symbols mean and that sort of stuff, it, it actually becomes quite an easy tool to understand and, and really good to use in your lessons as well. Um, the big thing about, obviously, solar taxonomy, which is uh, probably what the course is on today and why a lot of teachers are using it, is, is it's hitting all the things that we as teachers are being expected to use in our lessons now about the visible progress, differentiation, things like that. So I'll, I'll explain how we can use that, how we can use an effective use of feedback within it as well. Um, I'll try and show you how it's been used in the exam. And the last thing, I'll try and go through some examples of my own lessons, so some examples I'm using, uh, how we can go from shallow to deep learning. So you, you kind of get the theory and get an idea when we put it together with some actual practical examples of how you can use it in lessons and classroom based uh, and that sort of thing. If we go to pretty much, um, I'll just give you a bit of a brief introduction to start with. Um, I know when I've been on a few courses, um, it, there's a lot of theory behind it, but I always like to approach this from, from stuff that I've done in my classrooms and um, explain actually why as a PE teacher like yourselves, um, did I actually take uh, a bit of interest in this and why I used it. Um, so I'll just go through a few of the things about um, the, the reasons why you might want to use it in the future. Um, Obviously, the, the main thing about any sort of teaching is uh, with students is to try and develop obviously a solid understanding of the topics that we're trying to cover. Um, we're trying to get them to be competent in the main facts that we're trying to go through. And, and GCCPE, whether it's on Edexcel or AQA, there are a lot of definitions. And I, we got a lot of students on our course when they get to year 11, or even ex-students that come back in. And they said that GCCPE is one of the hardest to cover because there are so many definitions, there's so many um, term, bits of terminology you need to use, key concepts. Um, different bits of information covering a lot of different topics and it's up to us that we need to obviously obviously make sure that they're competent in all these and, and they remember them they are able to apply them and maybe take these ideas further when they go into their exam and things um, obviously we need to make sure that we impart the knowledge and we help them understand it they can relate it to supporting examples and so on to other topics and that uh, and that our A-star students actually need to go a little bit further still and especially with AQA with the scenario it really does draw upon students being able to use a lot of their knowledge from different topics and, and draw into those bigger answer questions right towards the end. Um, we also need to be able to, um, or I needed to be able anyway, to ensure that students were going from shallow learning to deep learning and all the different topics that were going on in our lessons. Um, and making sure that, you know, what Jeff Petty was talking about, um, if you've ever read his books, is, is trying to have mastery tasks and developmental tasks in our lessons. So whenever we go to a brand new topic, whether it be uh, gender and sport, whether it be diet, that we're given all the basic bits of information first, but then we're developing through our lessons and going to the mastery stuff towards the end. And, and Solo really, really helps do that. And like I said, right at the very bottom there, um, it's, it's hopefully trying to develop a real understanding of the topics with the students so they really do understand all the basic facts, see how they link together, see how they can use them in real life supporting examples, and then pull in other topics as well. And Solo really helps you do that uh, uh, very, very effectively. Um, again, let's go through why I've picked Solo above other things because I know a lot of schools um, and a lot of teachers that I know are using other things as well. Um, things such as the Accelerated Learning Cycle and Bloom's Taxonomy and I'm going to show you why they're a little bit different and why, why you may be thinking about using Solo might be uh, something you do for, from now on or, or maybe uh, go away and research a bit more before you go and use it again. Um, now there are a number of ways in your lessons that you could go from shallow to deep learning. Um, it's really, really good um, ways of, of obviously using your planning to ensure that students are going from this shallow to deep learning. Um, and I said the key for us as practitioners is to make sure that we choose whichever method which works best. And for myself, after using the three which you can see on the screen there, solar taxonomy is the one that's worked really, really well. Um, initially, I started using the accelerated learning cycle, um, which is something to do with uh, Alistair Smith. Um, 
Alistair Smith, um, he developed this cycle with some other schools um, and pretty much it was a way of getting students to tell you what they know about a topic before, which is the initiate phase. Uh, the second phase, he then give them loads of information. Uh, in the third phase, you then get them to do a challenging task to prove that they understand the information. And then right at the very end, obviously, we look at um, reflecting upon what the students know. Um, Bloom Taxonomy, link to that, um, obviously, is a way for students to go from shallow to deep learning. Right at the very bottom, remembering the facts and understanding them. And right at the very top, obviously, with the taxonomy there, is getting them to think about evaluating and so on. Um, as I said at the bottom, uh, so taxonomy um, pretty much does that a little bit better, and I'll show you just why now. Um, if you look at Blooms, like we said, um, in your lessons, if you're trying to plan out a theory lesson, we always want to try and get our students to gather an understanding. So we always try and impart lots of definitions, the keywords, the facts, and so on. So that's all the remembering aspect. And like I said, we move up the taxonomy if you ever used Blooms before to get them to understand it, be able to apply it, get them to analyze um, how the particular topic we're covering at the moment. Uh, applies to a sport and analyze that sort of thing and move up the ladder the problem obviously when I actually use Bloom's taxonomy in my lessons is um, it was a little bit difficult for students to actually go up to the next level I didn't really have many students saying oh, I'm, I'm at the applying level sir what do I need to do to get to the analyzed level it's quite difficult it's really good for planning but it's quite difficult for students to actually monitor their progress so uh, give an example of this um, if you ever did things like physique or look at somatotyping in your uh, lessons. Um, if you ever used Blooms before, you could pretty much get them to remember some of the, the key terms. So what endomorph and mesomorph and ectomorph is. You may get them to understand, obviously, the different body shapes, body sizes. Maybe able to apply them to sports. Um, you may be able to get them to analyze which sports would be best for different body shapes and so on, evaluate them, and maybe create some information again to go forward about how to um, use the body shapes in different sports as well. So that was the way that I used to plan my lessons to, to try and get them from shallow to deep learning. Um, but like I said, it's very difficult in my lessons for students to turn around and say, I'm at the understanding level now, how do I move on to the apply? Or I'm at the analyzing, what do I need to do to move to the evaluating stage? Um, so when I was planning my lessons out to get from shallow to deep learning, um, it did get a little bit difficult with students. So, as a result of that, uh, I moved on to something called solo taxonomy, which I'm going to spend uh, the next probably uh, 40 minutes, 45 minutes, going through different ideas about what solo taxonomy is. So, like I, said, I can see on the right hand side, um, there's a few people that haven't heard about it. And hopefully, you'll see that it's a great way of getting students to assess their knowledge before. So, if you were doing somatotyping or physique, you could ask them what do they know about the topic already. They can give you their ideas, you can then go away and teach them it and develop their understanding. Uh, and it, it, it links in a lot of the Bloom's taxonomy stuff as well, but in much more uh, a visible way for students to, to monitor their, their progress and so on. Um, so hopefully um, you will be able to see. Just out of interest, how many people have used Bloom's taxonomy uh, in their lessons before or even used the accelerated learning cycle in their lessons before? Brilliant, okay, so it's good to see that some people have got an idea about using Bloom's and Accelerated Learn Cycle. And solo taxonomy pretty much merges the two together. Um, it's Like I said, it's a great way for students to, like I said, with the Accelerate Learning Cycle, to show you what they know before, then you go and teach them, then you really get them to a challenging task and reflect on it, um, using Bloom's as a way of, of developing the difficulty of your task. And solo does that. Um, rather than having two separate structures, it's, it's a lot better because it works uh, on its own in, in its own uh, taxonomy rather than having two taxonomies working side by side. Okay, um, so solo taxonomy, um, a way that a lot of us are using it in our department and across other schools of developing that shallow to deep learning in your lessons to really try and help students uh, gather an understanding um, of, of how a particular topic is, what a particular topic is, how it relates to sport, um, showing all the links between that topic and then developing it further. 